IFL TV, MTK Global, here in Las Vegas with trainer Nigel Travis. Had a Cal Frampton's return to the ring on Saturday. First of all, Nigel, um, for those who don't know, can you just sort of talk about your last few weeks being here, there, and everywhere, really? Yeah, um, started in London with Chantal Cameron. Uh, she boxed um, to become the uh, mandatory for the, the light welterweight uh, WBC championship. Uh, which she won, boxed very well, um, and then from there directly I came all over to Vegas um, to meet Carl Frampton who came here the day before to acclimatise. Um, had, a, had a week over here with Carl um, and Akib Fias, who's the sparring partner, and um, Michael who's the strength and conditioning guy, so I had a week over here and it was glorious sunshine. It was beautiful sunshine, I had a big massive bag with big woolly jumpers in that my wife had packed me uh, and I got over here and it was glorious and never used anything out of me, out of my suitcase, out of my, in my bag at all. So this and then, um, so that set the tone for what I was going to be next time and then from, had a week over here, went back to Manchester and then flew to Dubai for Jack Cattrall who uh, beat Timo Schwarzkopf um, on Friday night, just gone. And a cracking performance, very, very good performance. Um, and prior to getting to Dubai, Friday night, I flew back from Vegas on the Friday, got back Friday, and Martin Murray and Rocky Fielding um, performed at the Olympia in Liverpool. Um, Rocky with a devastating performance, Maya Murray, with a steady performance as a kid who was expected to beat and didn't offer much, um, but mine will just get better when the, when the challenge rises. But uh, Rocky was devastating um, in winning. And then over to Dubai where Jack did the, did the business and then came back and then came straight to back to Vegas. Got a yesterday afternoon so just getting over the, the jet lag or such oh, it's not getting over it just struggling with it a little bit but it's all it's all good so yeah and I'll be able to say my heart bleeds and, I, and I, I don't want that I'm living the dream so yeah so here for um it's all cal um some performance on Saturday night which we're hoping against Tyler McCreary uh, and then back to Manchester to work uh, and then Aki boxes on the Saturday and Stephen Ward boxes the following Saturday and then uh, God willing a uh, nice Christmas with the family. I mean you have done something similar to this a few years ago you were in Tanzania with Mark Leach and then sort of had a, a mad dash to get back for Rocky Field. Yeah in. Zimbabwe yeah. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe sorry. Zimbabwe, oh yeah I think I went to Tanzania as well I don't know South Africa, Joburg. <laughs> And all that, but yeah, um, yeah, we've done it before. But listen, I'm not, you know, I'm definitely not complaining. I'm genuinely living a living a bit of a blur, but it's a bit of a dream. That's a for, for someone who's, who's who's grown up with boxing, you know, in my family all my life. It's you know, I'm I'm, I'm on the crest of a wave, and I'm, and I know that, and, uh, and my family know that. So it's I've got a see it through because it's such an enjoyable time and it's great it's hard to be away from my family my wife and my children but it, but it's necessary um, and you know um, and it'll help help me personally and and, um, and help my gym um, in, in the long run so um, it's a good thing uh, but it's hard it's hard for my family my family, you know, don't live it every day, but they do because I'm not there. So, but, but you know, it's what I am, and unfortunately, for good or for bad, better or for worse, as they say, it's hard to be away from my wife and my kids. But, but um, I'm, you know, I'm living my dream, not their dream. But, um, it's, I'm, fa I'm fantastically supported by by them. Um, so, yeah, so good. Like I say, you know, you, you love the boxing, obviously it's in your family's blood as well. I suppose getting the chance to do stuff like this 
I mean, you, you put it best. You just you start living the dream at the minute. Yeah, yeah. It was genuine. And I think that's that's a genuine thing. You know, um, you know I couldn't have ever envisaged this. It's, it really is, you know, a bucket list. You know, um, a bucket list item. Something you know, to fight in Vegas, top of the bill, uh, uh, the Cosmopolitan Hotel. You know. There's not many things can be this, you know, fine a Madden Square Garden. At this, and again, it will sound egotistical, like I'm a megalomaniac, it's stupid, but watching the, the top of the bill at Madison Square Garden, and, and I've done that, or Rocky Building's done that, nobody wasn't the result we wanted, but he said, you know, it's, you know, I can't, I couldn't wish for, I couldn't wish for, you know, more in the boxing fraternity or in the boxing environment, but um, it's what I dream. That's what I've dreamed of all my life, and, and now I'm living it. So, you know, my, my dad got me into boxing 40 years ago when I was a kid. Um, when I was, you know, a seven-year-old kid, who, you know, that's when I was really started messing around, and it's been in my blood. So my wife knows that. I've been with my wife. You know, I met my wife when, I'm, when she was 14, I was 15. Um, and so she knows what I am and who I am. And obviously my mum, my dad, my, my brother, you know, my family. And my kids were born into it, so dad's always been a boxer. When my kids were born, I was still boxing, still competing. And then, at my wife's suggestion, I stopped boxing because I was getting too old. I turned professional, which was a mistake. I would suggest because I got patched up. Um, and I was a 36 year old man. 36 year, year old man. So, um, and but uh, I tarnished if I, had, if I had a decent reputation as, as a boxer, maybe tarnished it because cause I didn't fulfil what I, whatever I could have done. But I don't regret it. You know, it's something that's part of me. It's, as I say, it's, it's in my blood. It's what what I do, what I've done all my all my life, and continue to do and enjoy it. And but but I'm I need a lot of support to do to do what I'm doing. Um, and, and my wife is that support and my kids. And even say that you know they're, they're the girls, the girls that I have, are, you know, um, and I make it of me really, so I'm blessed. Uh, but it's it's a blur, and and, and I'm, maybe I've said it, and I already said it in this interview. It's, it's on the crest of a wave. It really is living it, going all over the world. Not many people can say they can do that, and, and I am living. I'm living proof that you set your mind to stuff, and and listen, and you need a lot of fortune and, and luck. To do, land on your feet, um, and and you know, the hard work that you put in. Hopefully, gets you in a position where you can capitalise, if that's the right word, and, and, and come to these places. So yeah, it's great. When you look back at sort of what the gyms achieved over the past two years, you know, I remember a few years back when it, it just seemed to be you, Jamie, and, and Tommy Kyle, and that. I suppose how proud are you of, of how it's expanded over the last few years? Yeah, I, I am. You know, I'm immensely proud. Um, immensely proud of Jamie. Miss about a Tommy, um, and again a little bit of luck comes your way. Uh, but um, it's amazing that the more you practice, the luckier you get, as, a, as the old cliche says. And you know, I, I'd like to think that I've learned. I've had some of the best teachers in the world teaching me, you know, the game as such, teaching me boxing, and and I've in turn taken those. Um, Taking those lessons, you know, into my key, you know, my coaching, education as such, and uh, and and I'm and I partner with Jamie, you know, Jamie, you know, me and Jamie, you know, we're all together as such, and we do things together, and we are a partnership, and it's a tight team, and and it's you know, um, and we're close, and, and, and Jamie is also, you know, I believe one of the best, and I, and I think obviously he's been proving that by winning the Trainer of the Year last year. Um, because of the success that he's had with the gym, but it's, as you say, he started with Tommy and Jamie was right for, for chucking it in and, and having enough. He said after Tommy, we're going to stop. Uh, and I was never going to stop. I've obviously got my gym on my side, which is, you know, it's, which is part of my fabric now. You know, I, you know my side fire station boxing club is part of my own persona and my, part of my own personal thing now, and, and, and it's a, I'm very proud of that. But. Professional arm of what we're doing is grown arms and legs, and 
in turn, I would like to think that the, the kids from, from my gym at the, at the fire station will profiteer off, off where I am or where we are now. And, and again, God willing, that they'll, if they want, not, you know, I don't, pro boxing isn't for anybody, boxing isn't for everybody, and professional boxing certainly isn't. But I'd like to think that the ones who, who maybe want to, you know, have an option to come, come with us if they want to. And there's, there's not, definitely no pressure to do that. But, you know, kids who want to come with us and, and, and hopefully, you know, go on, go on the same trajectory to, to try and, you know, achieve what, what's happening now all over the world, you know, and, and replicate what the likes of Rocky Fielding, Carl Frampton, Mark Leach, Martin Muddy and the Jack Catterall are doing Chantel Cameron so you know and you know and it's not you know you're never too old, old to learn and I'm constantly learning you know being over here in the top rank, rank gym you know, it's, you know it's it's renowned for turning out champions and you look at the history on the wall you know you look at the you know the posters on the wall and I've, and I've got some posters for my gym so I'm hopefully going to put them up um, you know, when I get back uh, because the history of, of the sport you have to learn off that history, and, you know, and, it, you know it's, and it's, <coughs> it's, it's essential that you do, or you're just, you're just an old dinosaur, and, and things change, you know, everything changes in the game, but obviously looking back at the classics, you, know, you can also learn off that, but you know, you, you can't help but learn, and you know, I'd like to think that, that you know, no one knows everything, um, apart from one or two coaches who, who seem to imply that they do, but well, it is what it is, um, it's, you know, it's great to be part of it, and, and I am proud of where we are, you know, and, and I do believe there's more to come, so, <coughs> well, you know, we're over here in Vegas now with, with, with Carl Frampton, and, but I, th I think, you know, it's, um, it's not the start for Carl Frampton, but you know, it's maybe the start for our gym, that's what we like to think, you know, what we're doing, and, and all, all our fighters do seem happy, and I know, a million cliches in this interview, <laughs> you know, you know, a, a, um, a happy fire is a dangerous fire and all that stuff, you know, I, I've heard it, you know, we girls just say that time over time, but um, it's true, you know, that, that our, our boxers seem to be uh, performing, you know, and, and there are losses, but it's not a loss, uh, it's just a lesson, so if you learn from it, you know, you, you can bounce back better. Or whoever has lost it, you know, whoever we have had. We've had losses, you know, we're not, again, we're not bothered about, it's not about winning, 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 it's about your lessons and, and, and developing and, and enjoying it. You know, these you know, these, these lads and girls are earning money, you know, it's, it's the job. You know, it's not my job. You know, I've got a job. I'm, I'm blessed that the fire service allow me to, to, to do what I'm doing, you know, um, and I have the freedom to to facilitate stuff like this but yeah I'm immensely proud of, of exactly where we are and what we're doing and as I say long may it continue. And of course everyone doing great things in, in the pro gym and down at your gym like you mentioned as well you know people like Conor Tudsbury and, and a lot of other promising fighters coming through as well. Yeah 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 I, Conor boxes next week so I get back I get back on the, on the Monday and Conor boxes on the Thursday against Aaron Bowen uh, in the GB championships so it's just a straight final. Um, Connor's representing GB, Aaron Bowen, who's the best in the country. Um, last year he, he won the ABAs, um, and and it's really the you know the best the best the guy who's going to the I, I would suggest you know who's been selected to, who will be selected to go to the qualifiers is, is a guy called Ben Whitaker who's light heavyweight, um, and then there's there's pecking order to, to see who who can or will replace him. Um, you know, on the next level, uh, and Connor's uh, well placed to do that. Um, he's worked, you know, incredibly hard, uh, and um, and his future's bright and rosy. You know, but that's you know, that's not not to say that he's definitely going to achieve because there's a lot of hard work for him. But I'm very proud of him uh, as a person. He's the kid I've had probably the longest, or he's the kid I've had the longest in the gym. He came in as an eight-year-old lad. Um, 11 years ago, so now he's 19 uh, on a GB <coughs> podium squad, you know, potent podium potential, um, and so he's sustaining a lifestyle that you know is the start of, of his um, 
you know, of a, of a future in the sport. Uh, but but even the, the kids who are, who are not on the podium potential or not, you know, aren't boxing for England or I've got a couple of kids who, who are doing very well. Matthew Knight, who you know, won the ABAs last year and doing very, very well. But I've also got kids who, who are not, you know, winning major tournaments and not got representing the country, but who are equally, um, who, who, are, who I'm equally proud of because, you know, they work very hard um, and, and they achieve. So that's what boxing's all about. Boxing's about giving you the opportunity, you know, hopefully, hopefully making the choices to, to improve your life um, and that's not in a, in a financial position because I'd like to think that anyone who comes in in my boxing gym or any boxing gym will be better for it so you know, there are some fantastic, gym, fantastic gyms around around the country and around the, around the city of Manchester you know, Sean McDonnell you know what he's doing in from Austin you know, the, um, you know, Egan's you know Steve Egan and Sean Egan and, and, and all the lads who put uh, Jimmy Egan's gym. And, you know, there's countless, countless um, people doing some fantastic things, you know, people over in Blackpool, Andy Abro, there's, there's, a, there's a load and load of kids and, and the fact that those kids may be the next Anthony Joshua, that may be the next Ricky Allen, Floyd Mayweather, whoever, is irrelevant really, you know, and I mean that with the greatest respect in the world, it's irrelevant how much money they earn. You know, you know, the fact that Tyson Fury came from Jimmy Evans as an amateur and, and the fact that he's now one, one of, if not the best every way, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the world is, uh, is irrelevant. The fact that they've been at that gym is relevant for me, you know, and the fact that they are better people, that's what's the most important thing. You know, they, they come into a boxing club, they learn the respect, they learn the discipline, you know, uh, they, and they give themselves the confidence to say, yes and no to certain things uh, that will will and can change their lives but boxing is about education you know about you know rules that the kids seem to, to, to um, embrace you know and, and they want it and whether you know they've got mums or dads or whoever's in charge of the house who are maybe not giving them those those rigid you know uh, parameters that they have to abide you know live by Boxing clubs do that, and so I think you know I'd have, I'd have it back on the national curriculum in schools. You know, my you know my club, uh, we are in the process of attaining the you know uh, a lease to be to to improve our facility. You know, maybe put a you know put a provision on there for engaging with kids. So I mean, ma I'm massively proud of, of my side Fire Station Boxing Club because of what it can, and the potential that, that it can do. Um, and um, and I want it every day with my father. You know, there's not many people who can say that. You know, the man who, you know, the man who, who, who I uh, respect more than anyone in the world. Although he won't say that, he say, you know, we argue like cat and dog because we're so alike. But you know, he's the boss. My dad's the boss, and and, and I run, run my boxing club with him every day. And obviously, I'm over here now. You know, living a life of luxury. You, you would, people would say, you know, over in New York, uh, over in Vegas coming from you know Dubai and all the chasing me sail around the world and someone's got to look after the gym and I've got a great committee at the boxing club who do that uh, and, and a board of trustees who are a charity but, but, but my dad's the boss and, and I spend every day with him you know arguing like a kind dog but I love him because he's you know he's the man who, who's taught me most about boxing in the world as anybody um, or he's, he's, he's the person who I've learned off more than anybody so it's not many people can say that, and so that's another blessing. So it's all about being blessed. A lot of people sort of might look at the schedule you have, you know, sort of helping Jamie in the pros, you're running the amateur gym, firefighter as well, and wondered, you know, how, how does he manage to do it? But, you know, because this is all you've ever known, is that sort of how, how you manage so, to sort the, of do it? Again, and, and yeah, I think it's simple though, from, from my point of view, the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that is because I'm supported by my wife. That's, that's, the, that's the fundamental basis of what goes on. If my wife said no, then it'd be a different kettle of fish. Because, um, you know, we've been together a long time. And, and, and my first love and all that is a you know, soppy story like that. But, you know, she, she allows me to, to do it. She supports me by looking after our house, our children, you know, also working. She's got a job herself. And, and 
but she's balancing plates. I've got boxing plates. I've got other plates going on, fire service, other other my fingers in other pies, and um, loads of stuff. But it's because my wife allows me to do it. So um, without her support, I simply wouldn't be able to do this. So um, you know, she's the gaffer. So I've got gaffers everywhere. I've got my dad in the boxing and my missus in it of the house, but. Um, that's, that's why I'm allowed to do it. Yeah, I'm very busy. Um, but again, yeah, you know, I'm not, <laughs> and, and I know no one will give me something, and I don't want it because you know I would I would pay good money to, to be here where I am. You know, if, if at the end of all these trips, something you know, I, you know, I got a, an invoice to pay, then I couldn't argue because I, and, I, and I'd probably be happy to pay because you know, I'd, I'd give me the right arm to to become boxing in Vegas. I've been over here for you know for fights myself and, and dreamt of you know being part of a team that, that would be over here and being you know being part of a big a big fight card and now we're top of the bill at the Cosmopolitan Hotel you know not many can say that so it's wicked. Like I say so the reason we're here Carl Frampton I would delighted here to see him back after 11 months obviously the, the injury in uh, in Philadelphia back in August you, you just glad to see him back in the ring finally? Yeah yeah and you know and, and people think he's done I think that's another that's not a good thing for me. There's no pressure on on him. And um, people think he's done. So, and I certainly don't. And we as a team definitely don't think he's done because we've seen what he's been doing. Uh, and again, it was a freak accident over in Philadelphia. We were over there to fight. So that was another trip. And again, that you know that's box where boxing takes you uh, around the world. We took me to Philadelphia, and there was no fight there. But um, and again, it's very hard at the time when you when you're gutted. You spent a lot of money, you know, to, to get there, time to get there, arrange orders with, with the fire service, all that things. You arrange it all to come come away, and nothing happens. You know, it's such a letdown. But um, as they say again, cliche wise, everything happens for a reason. And you know, out of out of those, out of that, has come another opportunity. So because you know, after the Josh, before Josh Warrington fight. Genuinely, no one, nobody wanted to fight Carl Frampton. Uh, he was looking at, you know, Oscar Valdez. He was looking at um, Leo Santos Cruz. You know, he was looking at unification. You know, before he even had the world title. You know, he was always looking at those things. But nobody would fight him. Um, and as soon as Josh Warrington beat him, uh, which was a shock to me, to other people. You know, I, I you know, never expected it. But you know, I, I thought. Carl had too much and Josh would just perform fantastically. So and I doffed my cap accordingly on. So Josh was fantastic. But out you know, out of that, it was, and again when you sat there in change rooms, you know, upset, crying, devastated. It's very hard to think, you know, what is the positive that can come out of this. But after that, people were to buy him. So opportunity opportunity knocks and you've got to grab it with both hands and, and, and see and see where it goes. So that's where he is now. It's about an opportunity, um, and and I think that he can go on to, to bigger and better things. I think he'll be a world title, you know, be a world champion again. Um, at whatever way, you know, he decides whatever way the opportunity is. Akeeb on the seventh, and then Stephen Ward on the golden contract the week after. Yeah, again, exciting times. You know what? You know, when TK are doing, he's revolutionising the sport in my eyes. What they're doing, you know, the. the it's fundamentally what they're doing is looking after the boxers. They're giving them the opportunity. So all you know, the, the promoters and, and companies that who are who seem to have a stranglehold of the sport, the control of television and all that, are, are in no way as powerful. While the NTK have come out, come out of nowhere really and revolutionise it. So the fact that they can they're giving their kids opportunity to, to, to compete and they're competing. So there's no fight dates with certain promoters. MTK is putting a show up in Dubai, you now in Kazakhstan, you know, in Italy. I mean that's just the the uh, potential is limitless really. You know, it's potential to go onwards and it's life changing money for some of these kids. So the golden contract is life changing money, you know. So then you know I would know I'd give me, I would have given you right arm if I was ever good enough to, to compete in something like that. But, you know, it's um, to, to, to get a six-five deal over two years. You know, with um, with, with the, the decent money. 
you know, people can maybe think about buying houses and, and that's what they were on about. We're talking about people who are, you know, are risking their life at the end of the day, you know, I, know I, I don't like to talk about the, you know, the, the morbid element or the, or the serious side of the sport, but it's very serious. And these kids are risking their lives and should be rewarded, you know, properly. And, and certainly in this tournament, they are being done. And so, um, I think it's it, 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 it changing things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, again, and again, I'm just very, very happy to, to be involved. Great, well, now the rest of the team's back now. Anything else you, you want to add before we finish? No, um, I'm just, as well as, um, my missus is the, is the diamond, so I've obviously, I've said that a million times and I'll, and I'll shout that from, from the, from the um, tops of the mountains and people who listen to me. So, I love you, kid. <laughs> Everyone says, shut up, you big fucker, you big funny. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, Nige, thanks a lot for that, and uh, we'll speak to you later in the week.